is Nikon. January 16th, 2008. Good evening. Tonight we're going to focus on a controversial and mysterious condition known as Morgellons. There are thousands who say they suffer from its bizarre symptoms, but there are many in the worlds of science and medicine who believe that it's all in the mind. Well, now the government has weighed in, acknowledging that people are suffering and accepting the need for proper scientific investigation. So the Centers for Disease Control today announced that it would begin a new in-depth study to try and explain this strange condition. My co-anchor Cynthia McFadden reports. When we first met Ann Dell, she lived on Florida's Lake Mary in an idyllic setting. Her life was once idyllic too. Her family had caught the tail of the American dream. Her three daughters were good students, good athletes, and good kids. It seems to be a pretty typical American family. Yeah. Girls play softball. They're very good athletes. One catches, one pitches. Cheerleading competition. Fourth in the nation. But life now in the Dill household is far from perfect. Anne's 40-year-old husband, Tom, died two years ago in January, and she believes his death was due to a contagious illness that has infected her entire family. Tell me what you believe is happening on your skin. It's like fibers that come out of your skin? Yes, there's this fibrous material. Um, it's in layers. <sighs> Look at your arm. Our hands... Yes. Well, and they itch, and it's been described as feeling as if either bugs are crawling on the surface of your skin or underneath your skin. Underneath the skin has felt that way, especially like on the scalp, that something's moving under there. Yeah. I mean, you don't even like to say it because you know that there are people watching this who are going to uh, I know, crazy. because right away, that's what I know that they're going to say. What would be your first guess if someone brought in something that looked like fibers? They're fibers, I believe, from the environment, not from inside the skin. Dr. Vincent DeLeo is chief of dermatology at New York's St. Luke's Roosevelt Medical Center. He has not examined Ann Dill. I don't think this is any different than many patients I've seen who have excoriations and believe that there is something in their skin causing this. So these open lesions would be a result of them scratching at their skin? Yes, and then they begin to focus on those lesions and try to get them better, usually by picking out the fibers or the bugs or whatever it is. Let's see if there's some over there. But for Mary Leitow, a scientist herself, opinions like Dr. DeLeo don't add up. When her son Drew was just two years old, Mary noticed an odd sore in his lip that would not heal. He very simply said bugs, and he pointed to his lips. What Mary would do next would challenge the medical world and give hope to thousands of people across the country. As a biologist who once ran the electron microscope at Massachusetts General Hospital, she did what any scientist would do. She took a closer look. What I saw were bundles of fibers, balls of fibers. Even stranger, they glowed under UV light. It was red and blue fluorescence in fibers. Armed with this research, Mary took Drew to a doctor at one of the country's leading hospitals. But he dismissed her tale of fibers and wrote to her pediatrician. To basically say that my son needed Vaseline for his lips and that his mother, me, needed a thorough psychiatric evaluation. Instead of a psych evaluation, Mary began pouring through the medical literature, looking for clues. What she discovered was a 17th century reference to a strange disease with so-called harsh hairs called Morgellons. She named the strange fibers Morgellons disease and put the information on a website. Since then, more than 4,500 people have contacted Mary, claiming they too have Morgellons type symptoms. If you do a literature search in the medical literature, there is no Morgellons disease. The skin symptoms fit perfectly with the same group of individual symptoms that we saw in patients with delusions of parasitosis. Delusions of parasitosis. In other words, it's all in their heads. And despite today's announcement, many doctors remain skeptical that this is a real medical condition at all. They've pre-decided that, that these symptoms are too impossible to be real, so they've come to this conclusion that it's a delusion.